and welcome to SLCW Live. Coming to you from the sanctuary of Salem Lutheran Church here in Worcester, Ohio, we are glad you're here. Specifically, we'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday evening Lenten Bible study that will be taking place here every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. here on Zoom, and it'll also be viewable on our live stream on Facebook. If you'd like to just watch, that's fine. This Bible study is, is uh, something that you can immerse yourself into, and if you'd like to join us, you can do so at any time by going to our website at www dot slcw dot org and clicking the link to join the group on that same website you can download the materials that we'll be using for this bible study which have been developed by the elca uh, evangelical lutheran church in america and they are from the lent 2022 bible study program entitled away in the wilderness I've looked over this and I really think it's a great program. I hope you'll stick around and participate with the discussions. And right now, we're going to be getting started very shortly, but take a moment, unmute your mics, and say hi to the others that are in the room. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Barb. How are you? Oh, good to be here. Hello, right. Gloria. How are you? Can, is your connection getting any better, Gloria? You have to unmute your mic. I may not have instructed her how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you move around the screen just a little bit, like your finger across the screen, a little little option menu will pop up one of the options is a microphone you click on that it'll, it'll get rid of that little line through it and that'll unmute you um if you wanted to mute yourself again all you do is click that little microphone again and then it would have a line through it saying that you're muted i'm not exactly certain how you muted yourself without seeing that <laughs> but anyway <laughs> it happens and I can I'll, I'll I can walk you through it the next time I see you, if, if uh, you want a little bit more on on that education. Anyway, what we are working on today is what you see on the screen here. Um, if you're looking at the SLCW live stream portion of your screen, that will be where I will put slides and also. Uh, make it possible for you to read along in the book because I'll post where we're at and what we're reading in that window. So if you wanted to pin that window, what you would do is you would go up to that window and mouse over it. There's normally three little dots that appear when you mouse over something. And when you press on those three dots, it'll give you an option to pin. And you can pin that window and then all the people's faces will be on the top and that window will be in the large window frame of your screen. So that way you can have something large to look at while following along with us. All right, Thank having you. all those things, are there any questions or concerns before we get started? Um, I did pick up one of these at the church today. Excellent, I and you can. All right. I did. You can pick one of these up. Um, they are also available on our slcw.org website. Okay. Right beneath the little indication about our Wednesday night Bible study. You can download these in PDF form and look at them at your leisure. Uh, okay. They are There's both the, the booklet that you can see on PDF as well as the calendar that you can see, which oh. is a a calendar of prayers, a calendar of readings, a calendar of things that goes all the way from Ash Wednesday all the way through to, uh, I believe, the Holy Week and in, in all the way to Easter. So if okay. you want to follow along with that, you can download that off our website as well. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks. You're very welcome. Now, um, how do we get started, I guess? I guess I could 
do this. And well, I, I would do that if it worked. Do that. All right. So at this point, we will fade to the PowerPoint. So you can see what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the chapter one, week one, Journey in the Wilderness um, of the 40 Days of Giving program. Now, this, this program was developed by the ELCA through the ELCA World Hunger Program. And they created this Bible study to look into the Bible, uh, look at passages that help us understand what, for example, the people that spent 40, 40 years in the wilderness prior to being rescued out of Egypt, or mm -hmm. Jesus when he went into the desert prior to Holy Week, as we know it, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of trials and tribulations he went through during that time. And the uh, beginning, this week one, of the journey in the wilderness and away in the wilderness as part of this program is about Deuteronomy 26, verse 5. And that comes, uh, and, and there's a quote from it, uh, a wandering Armenian was my ancestor. Now, I'm going to put up on the screen, um, if I can get my mouse over there and you can hear all that clicking, um, Let's not go that route. Let's go this route. As I talk to myself, forgive me. I do this a lot. All right. So what you're seeing on the SLCW live page is the page. What is this page number? This would be page four in your booklet if you're following along. And uh, we, I, I hope you can actually view this and read this. I'm going to read the first few lines or first few paragraphs, and then I'll open it up for other people to take over and continue to read about what we're, we're learning about right here. All right. So the readings that we're talking about are Deuteronomy 26, verse 1 through 11, and we will actually view parts of that over and over again. Uh, we're also looking at Psalm 91, and Romans 10 uh, through 13, and Luke 4. So if you wanted to pull out your Bible and look at the version or the translation that you have of those readings, feel free to do that as we move along. Um, right now, <clears throat> I'm going to take a moment and start reading uh, where the, the booklet starts on page 4. All right, so we have a okay. curious set of readings for this Sunday of Lent. And this, they're talking about the Sunday that we just had this past week. Uh, these were the readings that we read from the, the uh, lectern on Sunday morning. Uh, Deuteronomy 26, verses 5 to 10 is a script for someone making an offering of what was called the first fruits, a religious practice for farming communities. Following the first harvest, that the Israelites reaped in the promised land, they were to gather a basket of select produce from the fields and carry it to the priest. When the priest laid that basket at the altar, the person making the offering would then say the following. A wandering Armenian, Aramean, I can never say these words right. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us, treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affli affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, with signs and wonders, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. And that is Deuteronomy 26, 5 through 10. I don't know if you're going to notice this as we go through this process. This was developed by the Lutheran World Hunger Program, and it is going to be pushing us and hopefully encouraging us 
to set aside a donation to help with world hunger. And that donation, you know, they basically set a goal, come up with an idea, where do we need to be in our giving and to focus on making that happen. They put in their calendar a goal. They have a little blank line for it. If you want to put in your dollar amount goal per day that you're going to be putting down on the side for your giving. And then you put that into the offering envelope or into the, uh, the offering plate on uh, Easter Sunday as mm. your Lenten offering. <laughs> That's the idea of it. Uh, it's supposed to be encouraging us to give to the World Hunger Program, but you could basically make this a, a giving practice for any gift, uh, any project that you want to support. So I will continue. These verses fit well with this somber season. Lent is, if nothing else, a time of looking back and a time of looking forward. In its 40 days, we remember how far we've fallen short of the glory of God. In it, too, we look ahead with longing to the breaking of the Easter dawn and the unveiling of the promise of God, who by grace offers us a future we could never earn. Anybody else like to pick up where I've left off? I will. All right, Barb, go for it. With Lenten memory, we recall the journey of our biblical ancestors, the Hebrews, led by God from slavery to freedom through generations in the wilderness. And we too reflect on what being descendants of oppressed slaves whom the Lord brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm means for us today. The, what's that word? The, I think it is formulaic, which is, a, a, it, it's an, a formula. Okay, formulaic. <laughs> formulaic verses of Deuteronomy recall this history, reminding the worshiper with their produce just how far God has carried God's people from the wandering Aramean Jacob through Egypt and to a new life and new covenant with God. Shall I go on? Sure. Oh. Um, this is through the wilderness, right? That I just read. Um, yep, you're in the right place. The, the danger inherent is the next part. The danger inherent in this journey from Egypt to the promised land is difficult for us to capture today. Even without the threat of Pharaoh's army to wander in the wilderness without permanent shelter, a stable source of fresh water or the means to grow food meant risking death from all sides. The lament of the people is understandable. The cry out to Moses, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Exodus 16. The Hebrews, led by Moses, were dependent on God's response to their complaint. Manna, a bread-like substance, rained down at night to fill them. Um, for our ancestors, the wilderness may have seemed like a trial to be endured and, if lucky, survived. I just can't imagine. Um, perhaps that trial isn't as hard for us to relate to that trial as it might seem. How often do we experience life as having more risks than rewards or more trials than triumphs? With rates of hunger around the world skyrocketing during the COVID-19 pandemic, natural and unnatural disasters wrecking havoc and conflict uprooting lives, the world can often feel like a wilderness to be endured and if lucky survive. And I I feel that with the news today. Yeah. Of that hospital being bombed, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of news like that we get to see every day. 
Yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. So yes. It's especially with the war in Ukraine right now, we're we're seeing a lot of people being stranded in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, they are. Not hard to see or relate to at this point, unfortunately. It's right, right. That's right. Well, I'll continue from here for a minute. If, if Thank unless you. you want to continue, okay. Please. The witness of our biblical ancestors is critical for us during Lent. The history recalled in the ceremony of the offering of the first fruits in Deuteronomy reminds us of two important truths as we begin the season. The first, first truth is that God is not the source of suffering. Even as the wandering Hebrews set, saw their time in the wilderness at times as a grueling test administered by an exacting God, it was God who journeyed with them. God responded to their cries with sustenance and protection that enabled them to survive, hence the manna. The second truth might be best summed up in the popular quote from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Fellowship of the Ring. Not all those who wander are lost. Even when the way seems uncertain for Jacob, the wandering Aramean, he was never alone as he sought a land to call his own. God was leading him somewhere as surely as God had greater, greater things in store for the Hebrews than a mere flight from Egypt. These truths mm. lie. Isn't that interesting, though? I mean, yeah. the whole idea here is actually understanding and experiencing the presence of God, even when we're in the wilderness, mm -hmm. even when we're in trying times. So these truths lie at the foundation of the church's witness today. Even as so many of our neighbors face the uncertainty of survival in a world where as many as 811 million people are undernourished in the Chiridzi district of Zimbabwe. Boy, these, these, these words are going to be beating me up, so bear with me here. In the, the Chiridzi district of Zimbabwe, Emma, Emma McGuende gives voice to this uncertainty when she wonders, in her words, how to survive as an old lady looking after seven grandchildren. What would being grounded in these truths look like for us, a church accompanying neighbors with challenges like Emma's? We can start by responding to the realities of hunger and poverty now and working with companions and partners with a vision for the future. In Zimbabwe, Lutheran Development Services embodies this vision, working with Emma and other residents of the Chiridzi district to implement new models of farming that conserve water, preserve soil, and increase yields. This work reflects the LDS vision of transformed, robust, and resilient communities living a just, peaceful, and dignified life, manifesting God's love. It is a testament to the two truths revealed in the story of God's journey with God's people and the readings for this Lent. As we respond to hunger in the world, we do so knowing that God has provided abundantly to meet our every need, even as inequities and injustice, injustice prevent so many of our neighbors from enjoying the fruits of God's creation. Our response and our Lenten confession of the ways we have fallen short in responding bear witness to the truth that inequities ought not to be. Amid risk and uncertainty, the work of neighbors such as Emma and LDS and of congregations in the United States and around the world is a testament that now, even now, God is giving life to a promise of a land flowing with milk and honey, a world in which hunger and poverty will be no more. This Lent, we look back, remembering the ways God has been with us in our journey, and we look forward, looking for the fulfillment of God's Easter promise as we work, trusting that God of our wandering ancestors is being revealed still today in our neighbors as we find our way through the wilderness together. All right, so PowerPoint, back to that. I will go with this route. All right, so at this point, um, we got to see several of the verses that they were talking about, and now they have some questions for us. Um, on the screen is the first question for week one, and that is, think of a time when a situation seemed particularly uncertain or challenging. In what ways was God present 
with you. And I'll go first. <sighs> um, right prior to the beginning of the pandemic, we here at Salem had to face a tough reality. And that was, we are a population of seniors dealing with a disease that killed seniors. And while we never shut our doors, what we did do was say, okay, we will overcome this by trying something new. And I know we've tried things in the past dealing with live streaming, but we were never very committed to it. We had put up a cell phone. We had uh, worked with the cellular network instead of trying to get our network to be up to speed. Uh, mm -hmm. When we'd have problems, we'd just say, okay, that's the end of that. When we had a song come up that we didn't want to have played, we'd cut the live stream at that point so that we wouldn't get a, 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 a copyright block or, or mark on our history. And in so doing, we were really not focusing on doing a live stream ministry or anything really social ministry wise or social Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, Instagram, anything of that sort. We weren't focusing on that at all. And um, at that time, right around the pandemic is when we had to do something different. Um, and in that process, I felt pushed to learn <laughs> everything I needed to learn to make it possible to have a higher quality uh, live stream. I used an old computer and my phones and a crappy plug-in USB camera to start out. But we, we started out and we had a, a, a live stream and people were able to watch and people were able to participate. And we excelled in the Zoom programming as well. We had the Bible study come up out of this. All of this was because of God being present with us. Clearly, difficult situation, particularly uncertain, but I felt his presence. So that's me. Anybody else want to share a moment of uncertainty or challenging uh, scenarios that you felt the presence of God with you? Yeah, yeah, just quickly, Tim. Um, the situation with my son, uh, when I take it back seven, eight months ago to where we are now, I know the healing and God is working through the doctors totally. And uh, then, of course, with my, my eyes, I can't believe the difference since my eye surgeries. I, That's good I, to hear. Want, I can't read real good yet. <laughs> <get the> right. <laughs> well, I didn't can't, know you could read before. Have right, have to get the right readers <laughs> or cheaters, as the doctor says, but my far vision is beautiful. So, yeah. So um, I know God's been present in both instances, especially with my son. I'm glad to hear that. And even even with when before before Thanksgiving and Bill's hosp, hosp, being hospitalized, you know we uh, I especially felt that God was with us because um, the care he had gotten and. Um, the last place he ever thought he'd be would be at Smithville Western. And but he he kept fighting. I mean, I've never seen him walk so fast in those halls. He was determined to get out of there. And you know, I I mean he had his walker and I said, Boy, I've never seen you walk so fast. And he's and he's he he said, I'm doing good. He just kept pushing and it was God that was pushing him in. You know, he's home and he's doing, 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 doing well. So um, that's wonderful. It definitely was a, it's good uh, God had a really 
strong hand in his healing. All right. Well, th there is another question that's listed here. Um, it is, how might the churches work alongside people facing hunger and poverty bear witness to God's promises, promise for the future? And I think you, Barb, probably know a lot about this more than anybody with our social ministry here at Zion and our Zion meal programming. Um, um. Yes, I have yet to not um, experience and, God in those people's presence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, we, you know, every other month we do provide a meal for the uh, downtown people, those in need. And besides, I see them not directly, but they do have a food pantry. But we do provide um, meals, and they're just not sandwiches we provide boxed meals for them, hot meals mm -hmm. for the folks and they're so appreciative yeah they, they do truly do appreciate what we are doing for them at that time and yeah it's it's a, a program worthwhile i'm glad we continue to do it Right. And it brings us together as a church, those that participate. I mean, you know, we're working together for a common, common, common goal. I agree. I, I think we could do better at her encouraging more folks to participate because I think it really is an enlightening experience. It is. So... All righty. Well, let's move on to the, the third question. And that is, imagine you had to rewrite the offering prayer for, from Deuteronomy 25, 26, 5 through 10. What would you include? What moments or events from our life or your life of the, or the life of the, your community be a part of your prayer? And we look back to all the things that they talked about, God coming to them in the wilderness and giving them the manna and leading them to the 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 uh, rescue in Egypt and finding their, their land and reaping the rewards of the milk and honey that came from that first harvest. Mm -hmm. so, so what kind of offering prayer would you throw out there? We lost a few folk. We did. Yeah. We lost, we lost people. Yeah, we lost a few people. I'm betting their internet connection failed them. I, not everybody has great internet connection like you do, Barb. Oh, I have Wi-Fi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I pay I pay for that. <laughs> you better, if, if, if you're paying for it, it better be good. <laughs> now, one thing that I would add to this uh, rewrite the offering prayer is that we'd offer up whatever we could do with the assistance of the technology that we've been granted and given by the, the grace of God that makes this all possible. Right. Um, yeah, I was really dumbfounded when the council said, like, yeah, let's go and let's, let's upgrade our system so that we can provide a good program and, and make our live stream. Uh, yeah. Professional looking, which is what we oh. can do right now. So, mm -hmm. The one weird thing that's happening I mean, with our live stream today, though, is uh, the idea that um, when I switch it to show the Zoom meeting, um, I'll show you what happens. If I, if I go to Zoom, uh, it, it hides everybody. There we go. Well, I'll pull them down. There. So as we looked at those reflective questions... Uh, we have one uh, last section, uh, which is the prayer for the day. And before we disappear, I wanted to open up the calendar and talk about some of the things that were going on in the next few days as part of this program. Um, but uh, well, let's let's do that now before we do the, the prayer. All right. So this is the 
calendar that comes with this program. And this calendar. Should I be seeing that? Um, well, you would see it in the SLCW Live window. Okay, I'll go there when we're done. Okay. Well, it's it's that's that it's the one of the screens that you see on the screen. Oh, All you do is click see... on it, and you don't oh, see I only, it. I only see you. You only see me. Okay, well then you want to mouse up to the where the other screens are, and click on the SLCW DDS. screen. Okay, I and that that should show you that, and it, you can see we have worship, study, oh, I ref see. Yeah. reflect, pray, I give, hear, those things that are on the SLCW Live. It's as if we're, that's their camera, is that, that screen. I see it. All right. And the, uh, it talks about uh, using worship, beginning our week, every week with the worship at Sunday, uh, either live stream or in person. Uh, this is going to be connecting with the readings that we have every Sunday. So this will coincide very smoothly. Uh, Monday, it says study using LCA World Hunger's 40 Days of Giving Weekly Lent and Study at Home or with your church community to dive deeper into so stories of hunger and hope in Lent. And I downloaded it and gave it a possibility on. So it's about Tuesdays. You use these days to revisit and reflect on the weekly study readings, either in small groups or individually. Then we pray, use the prayers of intercession shown throughout the calendar. This Lent, as together, uh, we humbly ask for God's care and blessing over all creation. Prayers have been adapted from the Sundays and Seasons, Augsburg Fortress, 2019. I'm not quite exactly certain why they didn't do 2022, but because <clears throat> we do have those prayers. I guess it's the same year. It'd be uh, Seasons, or Year C is what they call that. Yeah. Thursday, as you, as you journey through Lent, Consider how your gifts to ELCA World Hunger can create hope throughout the world. Set a specific goal, such as $2 a day, or select one of the ideas shown throughout this calendar. And Friday, well, we have a day in, in there that we're not hearing. Here, hear the word of God this Lent. Read and reflect on each week's selected Bible verses on your own, with your family, or with a small group. And that's what we can be doing while we come back together on Wednesday nights. So, and then finally sing, close each week, and remind yourself of the salvation to come in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Read the included hymn, text, either to yourself or out loud as a group, or consider singing the full hymn in your prayer group, Bible study, or worship service. Now, I tell you the truth, I haven't really seen the hymns they're talking about here, so I might not have looked far enough for that. But this calendar will show you... Where we're at right now is the ninth. So if you wanted to catch up, you could read through some of these readings uh, over the next week and then catch up by reading the ones that are for this week. For example, it goes uh, on the 10th tomorrow. Uh, They uh, talk about giving a $100 gift to the ELCA World Hunger this Lent. Um, then on the 11th, the Lord, Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. Thus, the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Those are the Deuteronomy verses that we read just already. And then Christ be our light. There's the song that they were talking about. Uh, oh. that, that is in the Red Hymnal, Hymn 715. And uh, Christ be our light. The words are longing for food. Many are hungry, longing for water. Many still thirst. Make us for bread broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our light. So that little calendar that you have, that you can download off of our slcw.org website. will give you something to talk about or do or read or focus on in between the sessions that we have on Wednesday nights here at Salem Lutheran. Um, Tim, not yes. to interrupt, but is there a way to make the print larger? 
Um, what are I'm you like seeing. on your phone? <laughs> are you like on your no, phone? No, I'm on the computer. Oh, you are. Um, if yeah. you pin the SLCW Live window, it should make it full screen, and then all the other windows will be small. Okay. Okay. If if you uh, have it in like uh, they call it gallery view. It will depend on how many people are in the room, how large it is. But if, okay. if you put it into presenter view, or what do they call that? Speaker view. And, uh, oh, goodness, I just clicked the wrong thing. Now you can, if you were on the live stream, you'd see the, the, the window kind of collapse into itself. Mm -hmm. um, but, <laughs> but yeah, if, if you mouse over the SLCW live window, and then click on those three little blue, the, the dots, three little white dots mm -hmm. in a blue background. It will give you the option to pin that window. And when you do, it'll make it larger. Of course, I think if you download it from the website and you put that in, you know, load it up into your uh, Internet Explorer or whatever, it'll be as large as you want it to be. Okay. Um, so you could, I would encourage you to download it so you don't have to try to read along on the screen here. I right. can tell from my own screen. It's blurry no matter how big you get it. Um, uh -huh. So that would be a tough read anyway. It's real okay. crystal clear here in my screen. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Surprise that it's so clear. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I'm the one sending it out. It should be clear, but all right. Uh, so thank you. Pray with me as we finish it off uh, this week. Um, and hold on a second. Let me get all the way over here. I guess there's a fourth question we never got to. Is there? Hold on. Let's get to that fourth question. Fourth question. How does or should being descendants of a wandering Aramean, such as Jacob, shape the work of the church today? Now, I think we're all descendants of a wandering Aramean. I mean, if you think about it, we're, I don't know how you try to trace it back that far, but I'm sure we have some sort of a lineage that goes back to that time. Yeah. Um, so the question seems strange to me, how does or should being a descendant of a wandering Aramean shape the work of the church today? Well, I, I think it should be the, 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 the same kind of blessings that we give to the church as they did back then they realized the benefit of god being present with them and giving back to their church and that in light has also given is the first fruits the milk and honey shared with others in our congregation shared with others seeing jesus in action um doing the uh the zion meal and, and other activities that we do just trying to get people to realize that God's present with them. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing. Sometimes people see all the hate and the cruelty in the world, and they don't see how God would allow this to happen. As we had learned today, God doesn't do that. God doesn't make this happen. It's no. the world and the, and the evil in it that makes this happen. But God is present. He can help us survive it. He can help us through the hard times. He can give us the nourishment we need, and we know that he does. Um, and that kind of knowledge can move us forward. Hopefully, having people fall in line and say, hey, I believe, I agree with that, and I want to follow where I'm, I follow you with that, and we can move forward. <laughs> Anybody have anything else to add to that? I just want to say that um, the way the fellowship is, oh. The way the fellowship is, oh, what you? Yeah, the way fellowship is now, I think it's very inviting. Well, we're definitely trying to make it inviting. I, I think a lot of the thing, the reasons why we haven't had a consistent fellowship in the, the last two years is because there's just too much fear dealing with the pandemic right now. And... Uh, it's going to be difficult to get over that fear and, and be able to share time and fellowship with each other because of the fear of COVID still being there. I really look forward to a time that we're not going to be worried about that. 
Yeah, well, here's here's the last thing. I'm talking about eating. Of course, we're talking about eating, right? Right. Well, in about two weeks, we have a, a right. chili cook-off coming up. You know, it's going to happen at the same time as our normal third week fellowship. And I'm putting down the gauntlet. I'm saying my trophy that sits downstairs on top of that cabinet <laughs> is up for grabs. I don't know who's going to get it. But if you submit a chili and bring it to Salem on Sunday, I believe it's the 20 something. I don't know what day it is. Let's see what day in the calendar it looks like. Come on, get over there. Calendar. The 19th. Roll, roll on. Calendar. That'd be. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th. It'd be the 20th of March is when we have our third week fellowship. Um, and uh, so, yes, we are set for a, a real competition. I hear Sharon <laughs> says she has a chili that might, you know, I mean, if you call it chili. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that might compete. Um, I've already thrown some uh, ideas out for other people who are thinking about making a venison chili, which I'm looking forward to trying out. Oh, wow. Um, I know uh, Morris in the past has made venison chili, and that was just because he you know, ran into a deer on the way to church one day and decided to make venison chili. Um, <laughs> But uh, that, that not being minimized as much as it was, it was still a delicious chili, even though it was roadkill by a ram truck. Anyway, um, let's bow our heads and pray as we end this first week of our Lenten Bible study. God of our yesterdays and tomorrows, you guided our ancestors through the wilderness to freedom, a new home and a future with promise. Turn our hearts toward our neighbors who face uncertainty, insecurity, and risk today. Inspire us with compassion for their needs, gratitude for their gifts, and a holy yearning for justice, that all may experience safety, security, and hope in our world today. In your name we pray. Amen. I don't believe there... Uh, I think it nailed what we're dealing with right now, that prayer. I think it, uh, when they wrote this, how many months ago, uh, maybe how many years ago, how would they have known that we were dealing with a, a war in Ukraine and uh, the risks of people all over the world right now with Russia asking, acting aggressively? I don't know, but it, it fits. So I hope that you... Uh, enjoyed our first week of Bible study here as part of the Away in the Wilderness program. And hopefully you'll join us back here next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m., where we will continue. Any closing remarks by folks? Yes, I will definitely be here. Okay, glad to hear that. Me too. Excellent. Glad to hear that. I hope that the other folks that were in here earlier, I don't think Betty can speak, <laughs> but um, I hope that they'll return as well. So that being said, thank you very much for all coming out here tonight and joining with us on this Bible study. God bless. And uh, we'll see you hopefully maybe even on Sunday for our live stream and our Bible study there. So of course. take care. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.